Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 92. This mold has me so excited because this week we have a collaboration with the lovely Sophie McPike. So I sent her a few of these pieces for her to create herself. So here I am pouring it up. It's quite a round overly shape, which is quite exciting. We haven't had one of these shaped molds yet. I opened it up and it was a little bit tricky to get out at first. This was just due to the pouring spout getting a bit stuck on the side. But once I peeled that off, I was able to pull the top half off off to reveal a beautiful curvature vase this is probably one of my favorite shaped molds like the actual shape of the mold is really aesthetically pleasing and the way it just popped out was so satisfying I then cut off that pouring spout and tidied up the rim this was like a really rough first go after this they were actually really easy and they came out almost perfectly I also tried one where I cut that top little lip off for one of my designs but let's jump over have a chat to Sophie about her designs and then you'll see me painting some of mine whilst we chat so let's get into it hello Sophie hi Shelby thank you for being a part of this video I would love it if you could introduce yourself to everyone here sure thanks for having me so my name is Sophie McPike and I am an artist based in the hills of Melbourne in the forest I'm primarily a painter and illustrator illustrator but I've been getting into ceramics over the last four years. I am I'm just inspired by nature and colors and flowers and I don't know I love rhythm and flow and balance in my paintings as well and I also love big soft curvy bodies because I am someone with a big soft curvy body and I want to represent us in my art. <laughs> I absolutely love your work and I don't think I've told you this, I don't know, but before I even started my art journey, I was obsessed with your work. They just were so beautifully colorful and lovely. Like I'm such a fan girl. Oh, thank you. So it's so nice to have <laughs> you. So nice. I didn't know that. That's nice. I've also been a big fan of you for the last year and a half or however long it's been. I think I found you when you were a little baby just opening up like your first mystery mold and I was like who is this person I need to know them they are going to be my friend <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad we're friends I actually wanted to do this mystery mold with you in particular because of your curvy bodies I don't know why but the shape of this vase I just thought it was perfect for one of your illustrations how did you find working with the vase shape. As soon as I opened up the package that you sent me full of the vases, I was like, yes, Shelby got it right. I love the shape as well because it kind of echoes the curviness of the bodies that I like to paint. I found it really fun to paint on. It was like simple, but like a beautiful shape. I don't know, it just lended really well to a lot of the shapes and flows and rhythms that I use in my work. So I was like over the moon that you had chosen this little vase for me. I sent you five vases in total. So would you be able to talk about what your ideas were and what inspired them? Yeah, I wanted to do something different for each vase. The first two vases, I kind of wanted to do something that really reflected my style. And then I wanted to do something a little more experimental on the other three. I mean, I live in a forest and I'm really inspired by trees and I'm doing all these paintings lately with all these like kind of of psychedelic super colorful trees all in a big tree pile so that was the vase that you see with all the trees and stuff and that was really fun I really liked playing with the flow and the little river at the bottom the first vase I did was the curvy bodied person holding the big dandelions and I guess that's just me waiting for flowers to bloom and being like I just want to be surrounded in dandelions and flowers and so here is me projecting that desire onto this vase and I just got this new super dark blue underglaze that I was really excited to use and when I painted it on it was pale purple and I was like oh no this is gonna look terrible all the values are too similar but then I kept faith that it would work out and it did and it came out this beautiful rich navy blue and it just made the flowers pop on two of the other ones I did sort of more of like a random painterly watercolor effect on them there's a blue one and a yellow one and I painted these dark blue stars 
on them and I thought that would just be a fun little graphic watercolory vibe. Pink one with the curly swervy flowers. That was just like a, I had no idea what to do. I ran out of ideas. So let's just do some flowers with some super wavy stalks and leaves. And that was fun. I didn't yes. even realize that that purple, I was watching you paint. I was like, oh, we both chose purple as our background colors. I didn't even realize that was the blue. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it? It was, it was a total like random call there that I, I just picked up this little vessel of paint at the shop and I was like, oh, a soft purple. I like that. I didn't read it. I just was like, color, good. I'll take it. And then when I got home, I read that it was meant to be dark blue and I was like, let's just see what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. I don't really plan stuff really. I just let stuff happen and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I was really lucky that this one worked out. Yeah, I, I am the same. I get a lot of people being like, oh, you know, those colors you picked are so perfect. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it looks good and <laughs> wishing for the best. <laughs> I actually thought it would be really cool yeah. to yeah. tell us about your kiln and what makes your kiln so special. Our kilns are actually twins. <laughs> I think my kiln looks like a little pig. And when I got it, I was like, I need to give it a name that has to do with pigs. <laughs> and... I was also listening to some Elvis Presley at the time and my friend was like, why don't you call it Elvis Pigsley? Cause it's a hunk of burn and love. And I was like, yes. So that's my kiln. Her name is Elvis Pigsley cause she's a hunk of burn and love. And she's your kiln's twin. We even got them from the same places. I'm pretty sure it's small, but it like fits in my small little studio and it's a good one. I, I love, I love the size of our kilns. They're really great because they're a great hobby beginner kiln, but they're also great for smaller test firings as well. I would actually love people to put in the comments what my kiln should be called. I've never actually named my kiln. Your kiln needs a name. It's part of your family. <laughs> what are three pieces of advice you would like to give to aspiring artists that are watching this video? When I was starting out, I wish I heard the advice to be yourself. Like be unapologetically you and stay true to what you want to make. Don't stick with trends. I know jumping on the trend bandwagon can get you like views and stuff, but ultimately that's gonna go away. If you are authentically you, people will end up coming to you and will start orbiting around you because they see your voice and they see that you are being truly you. And just experiment and have fun and scribble and be weird and silly and just play. Have fun with it and don't get too serious and bogged down if you have a bad art day here and there because we all do. Even the professionals have bad art days. It's totally fine. That's my advice. Get silly be fun, be authentic. I love that. That was a very clear and succinct way of explaining just your whole entire energy. And I think a really helpful piece of advice sort of for people that are aspiring to be artists or maybe are aspiring to a creative endeavor or just need that advice for this week. I think that that is really lovely. And thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, thanks Shelby. It's something I'm really passionate about and I talk about it quite a lot in my own videos. So I just like, want to explode heart beams of like just have fun and be yourself and be silly like all over the world that's what I want to do so yeah what was your favorite part of the process my favorite part of this process was just like being able to work with another Aussie artist that was so fun and I really love doing collaborations I love connecting with my community I love forging stronger friendships and yeah just sharing in an experience it was just a really delightful collaboration I want to do more <laughs> I totally agree I was itching to see how you were going to interpret the piece and how there may have been like crossovers or totally different styles come out on the piece it's just so exciting to be inspired by one another but to also support one another in this creative space yes and I, I love the way yours turned out as well 
well. I think it's they're super cute, and they kind of ours kind of go together in a in a weird way. They complement each other somehow. Like without, we never exchanged ideas or shared anything before doing that. We just sort of did it ourselves se separately. So I love how they have links, but they're also totally their own thing. I love that. I actually noticed that too, and it was almost like we had done our own version of draw this in your style, but a pottery edition, which would be so cool to do. But it was like there were similar colors and similar concepts happening on the pieces, but in our own unique voice, which was so cool to see. That's actually a good idea. Where can people find your work and support you? I am on all the social medias. I have Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you know, all those, all the things. And it's just my name, Sophie McPike. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Do you have any final closing comments that you would like to share before we kick off to the kiln reveal? Thanks so much for having me, Shelby. This has been really fun, a really fun collaboration. And I'm so happy to see our pieces together on the same screen. And yeah, I will see you soon. Thank you so much, Sophie, for being part of this video and I guess showing uh, what makes you you and your art style so very fabulous and infectious. I am so grateful you could be a part of this video and make the time to create these pieces and bring the video together. And thank you so much for all your advice, tips, tricks, and just beautiful chin wags in this week's video. So for the rest of this video, I thought I would do a quick little recap of what I created and then we'll go to the kiln reveals and the finished results which you heard us talking about in the voiceover so first up I created three vases with a sort of psychedelic landscape with beautiful 70s style flowers almost like a trippy wallpaper uh, so I did all these beautiful little characters of clouds and rainbows and suns and moons and shooting stars which was quite interesting to see the parallels of Sophie also featuring a lot of shooting stars and this sort of psychedelic landscape around the vase and then I decided to try something new although the psychedelic landscape were really new to me I absolutely loved doing them but the new new is trying out some matte glazes after lots of requests to try them out and doing them in an abstract sort of color layout so you can see here that I'm adding that matte glaze on in really large random blobs and shapes and sort of lining up each shape to have an even negative space around all of them so balancing out that white background with all the shapes it was actually a lot of fun to not have any idea of what the shapes were going to look like and just sort of lay them on. Next up, it was time for Sophie to pack her beautiful Albus Pigsley and reveal her finished results, which are absolutely fabulous. You heard Sophie talking about all of these designs earlier, and I am so impressed. It's just so lovely to see someone else interpret something almost entirely different in colorway or entirely different in their own hand stroke but with similarities across both and like a little series it really inspired me to see Sophie's work come to life. Then it was time for my kiln firing, so I popped my matte ones in there as well as my glossy ones. And here they are. I am really in love with this finished result. They are such a beautiful, versatile vase shape that I could do so much with. I feel like any artist could do so much with these but these really popped. These matte glazes are just fantastic. They're new from Chrysanthos. They're a new one that I got and I am in love with how they turned out. I'm not usually an abstract pop color person, but I could not keep my eyes off these. Despite the work I put in all the psychedelic ones, these drew my eye in straight away when I opened the kiln. Here are Sophie's beautiful ones all together, post-firing. They are just so lovely and I'm just so happy that Sophie Sophie could be a part of this video because you get to see how glorious and imaginative her work is. It is truly aspirational and inspiring to see the way she interprets shapes and flow and movement in her work. I have always admired her and I've always admired the way her mind and creativity thinks and just 
definitely go give her a follow if you want to feel inspired her painting videos are gorgeous they just take you through the whole motion and flow of the artwork they are very zen and very peaceful i hope you enjoyed seeing sophie's interpretation on these vases as much as i did now let's jump over to see my finished results and how mine turned out as well the way these bright colors have a hold on my eye is just phenomenal. I have never tried abstract work before and I've never tried using such bold colored shapes. These have just won me over a lot. Like I'm not gonna change my style or anything rash like that, but I, I had so much fun applying these bold shapes that I would love to try it again, even in just like a monochrome colorway as well. Here are my three psychedelic pieces. I have lots of footage painting these, but I didn't include all three of them. I only included one in this video, so I'll make a separate video of me painting the other ones, just cause otherwise it would have just been like lots of painting but they turned out fantastic and like a world of their own i am so obsessed let me know what you thought of this week's video in the comments how you liked the collab and maybe suggestions of who you'd like me to collab with next here is your sneak peek for next week thank you so much for watching